Hello everyone. Let us continue learning C language. In our previous videos, we have discussed about looping structures and we also discussed about data types essentially. In that, the data types are classified into three types, which are called as primitive data types, derived data types, and user-defined data types. We are done with primitive data types. Let us talk about derived data types. There are three types of derived data types we have. The first one is arrays. Second one is structures. And the last ones are unions. Let us talk about arrays in the beginning. By definition, arrays are called as collection of similar data type. That is group of variables of same type. Now imagine in a scenario where I want 10 integer variables, the only way to do it without the help of arrays is nothing but to have 10 individual variable names like int A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Now, there won't be any common unique way to access these variables. Reason because these are independent variables defined in independent variable spaces. So there is no connectivity between these variables. Now, how these can be brought together? These all these variables can be brought together with the help of one single array. And that is by writing it as int arr of some size. Right now, providing it as 10, this will represent the size of the array. And the array name is ARR. This will represent the name of the array. Now, I have got 10 variables, 10 integer variables with one name called ARR and how these can be accessed. And what are those 10 individual variables? And those individual integer variables are array of 0 and goes on till array of n minus 1. 0 to n minus 1, that is array of 0, of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. I have got total of 10 variables here. And this is how an array is declared and used. In short, to show you how to use an array, I'm going to get few values from the user. I'm going to store them in an array and then print it. Let us try a first question. Print the minimum value of an array. Let's create a new file. I'll save this file as arrays.c. Standard input output.h. Starting with int main. I'll receive the size of the array first. N represents the size of the array. And I'll receive the array size from the user with the help of a scan of statement. And to support this, I'll also have a printf statement. Printf enter size of array. Now I'm going to declare the array here. Now remember guys, this way of declaring array of n is not possible in the native old C compilers like Turbo C compiler or Boran C compiler. This is possible only in the modern day C++ 14 GCC version of compilers. Reason because it has improved a lot and it has had some instances from the dynamic memory allocation and so on. So this is possible only in modern compiler. Do not try this kind of declaration and older native C compilers. Instead of the seventh line, I suggest you have int array of some maximum size like 1000 or 100 if you're executing the same code in Turbo C language. Okay. Now this will act as a dynamic memory allocation, which will act as dynamic. It is not the actual dynamic allocation though. but still helps you understand it. Okay, this will talk, we will talk in detail about this line in future when you talk about dynamic memory allocation. I have to get values for these variables from the user and i is equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. I'm scanning each and every single value from the user, scan of percentage d, comma, ampersand, array of i. 
I'm scanning each and every value from the user. I'm going to print the array in the array format. Int i is equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Now we we'll have a look at the pattern in which I'm printing. I'm going to print the array in the pattern of arrays itself. Array of percentage d. This percentage d represents the index of it. Equal to percentage d. This percentage d represents the values. Followed by a new line character, comma the values of i and array of i correspondingly, and end with a return zero statement. Now this will help you understand how uh, array is received and stored inside the compiler. I'm going to compile with the command of gcc space arrays dot c hyphen o arrays. No errors. I'm running the file arrays. It is asking for a size. I'm saying six elements. And I'm entering a random six elements. You could see how the numbers are stored in the array in a sequential order. I've entered seven numbers here, so it has received only six numbers out of it. The seventh number is omitted. It has taken only the first six numbers because I have set the array size as six. I'll run it one more time. Six elements. I'm giving random six elements. I've typed six numbers now, and I press enter. The six numbers stored in the array in this fa fashion. Hope the basic idea of how the array is declared and used is clear. Now let's quickly move on to how this array is manipulated inside the memory. Now arrays are nothing but sequential memory blocks. Now let's talk about the common differences between a common integer variable and an array variable. When you declare an integer variable like int a, only one memory block is allocated. When you declare an array of some size, let me assume same size of 10, what happens is for single integer variable, we know the size is 4 bytes and the size product by the user here is 10. So this multiplied by 10 will give you 40. 40 bytes of memory will be allocated for this variable called ARR of 10. So what happens is you'll have 40 consecutive memory blocks. Okay. The first four blocks belongs to array of 0. Next four belongs to array of 1. Next four belongs to array of 2. Next four belongs to array of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 correspondingly. Okay. Now, every single value is a 4-byte block. Now, ways of accessing it. Now, in terms of a single integer variable, we know int a, where a represents the value, ampersand a represents the address. What about arrays? Array of i represents value. Ambassant array of i represents address. This is perfectly good. But what about the array ARR itself? Now, ARR itself will act as a pointer because arrays can be used as pointers as well. That we'll discuss in future in detail. This ARR represents, this is literally equal to array of zeros address. And there are four ways in which the array values can be accessed. It can be accessed as array of i, can be also accessed as i of array. It can be accessed as star of array plus one or plus i, star of i plus array. So these are the four ways of accessing array, which are very common, but still knowing these four types is really important. And especially the last two types, because they are literally parts of your pointer concept. So please be sure about how the array is done with the ways of pointers. Instead of this line, any of the other line can be reused. There is nothing wrong about it. It runs perfectly fine. So declaring an array and then using it is done. I hope the concept of arrays are much more easier and clear for you people to understand. See you in the next part of the video about structures and unions. Thank you. <laughs>